Good morning and happy Easter. He is risen indeed. Please join us for our Bethel Church of Talmadge Easter service in just a few moments.
the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the rolling lion declared the grave has no claim on in the morning then in the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim God and Lord most high in glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King, what a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. Sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us 
now What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a wonderful name it is Nothing compares to this What a wonderful name it is The name what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, veil so before you, silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. Praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is a kingdom, yours is a glory. Yours is a name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus You have no rival You have no equal Now and forever God you reign Yours is a kingdom Yours is a glory Yours is a name Above all Nothing compares to this What a powerful name it is The name of Jesus What a beautiful name it is What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. You have the name that is far above any other name, the name that's conquered the grave, the name that we can run to and find safety. And we're going to do that right now, Jesus. We're going to run to you. We're going to pray. We're going to trust you that you will give us all that we need and even more. So today, church, we want to come to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to uh, pray for one another. In fact, if you're watching live right now on Facebook, uh, Go ahead and type in the comments the need that you might have today. And we're going to use that as a point of prayer, not just today, but throughout the entire week. And we're going to ask the Lord that he would bring healing and that he would bring uh, provision. Uh, we're, we're, we're getting stories of how God has taken care of his, of his kids. Even in the midst of this crazy time that we're living in, God is so faithful so don't be afraid to pray, and don't be afraid to have your brothers and sisters in Christ pray for you because God's working through these prayers. And we know that there are people joining us from all over, so I'll, 
I'll rattle off names that maybe you don't know, but I'd like to ask you to pray for them as well. I'd love for you to pray for uh, a dear friend of ours named Sherry Ann, who needs a, a touch from Jesus. And, uh, and she may be watching today. We're going to pray that God just touches her right where she is at right now as she goes through this cancer battle that she's facing. Um, uh, there's another dear sister in our church by the name of Juanita who is uh, in the hospital right now, uh, was rushed into emergency surgery. From what we understand, she's doing good, but uh, we we'll want to pray that God touches her right in that hospital room. And your needs, we want to pray for you. We want to pray for whatever it is you might be facing. And we know that God is able to do more than we can ask him to do. This is Easter Sunday. This is the most important day of the year in the Christian calendar. And the reason being, if there is no resurrection, there's no hope. There's none. Uh, the Bible tells us if there is no resurrection of Jesus, then we, we have nothing. But what sets Jesus apart from every object of worship that there's ever been in all of history is that Jesus is the only one who has been able to conquer death. And because of that, he deserves our worship. That's what sets him apart as God. He is Lord he is Savior. And so it's with that in mind that we go to him because if he can be victorious over the grave, he can be victorious over my financial need. Yes, he could be victorious over cancer. Hallelujah. And he could be victorious over a hospital stay. He can be victorious over anything that it is that we're facing. So we are going to our Lord knowing that not only did he conquer the grave, but he can conquer what it is that we're going through. So would you join me now in praying and believing that God to touch your needs and all the needs that are on the comments section and all the needs that I've mentioned? We're going to pray right now. Would you join me? Lord Jesus, we come to you right now. We ask you that you would be with every need represented by those that are watching today. No matter where they're at. Our prayers are not too distant that you cannot hear them. So, Lord, today we come to you, the victorious, risen Savior, and we ask you, Jesus, that you would touch your people. God, we lift up people that we care for so much, for Sherry Ann. God, that you would touch her body and heal her of this cancer. God, that you would touch Juanita as she is in the hospital, Lord God. Lord, there are others that are facing battles. Some of us are standing in for loved ones that we care about so much. God, there are needs that maybe I don't even know about, but I'm so thankful that you know our needs even before we ask. So, Lord, we pray that you would bring peace and hope and supply and healing and happiness and restoration to every person who might be listening here today. God, we trust you. Jesus. We rely on you. Holy Spirit, we ask you for your power that we can go another day. And Lord, we'll thank you for what you do. We'll give you praise in advance for what will take place. And we trust you wholeheartedly, Lord. In your precious name, in your mighty and precious name. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, worship team. They're going to minister in song in just a little bit. And uh, we're glad that you've joined us today. And uh, we like to do this now during these live streams. You can maybe type in the comments where you're from and uh, where you're watching from today. We know we've got some from different states, and it's pretty neat. And so uh, uh, let us know. And uh, obviously, the Bethel Church family, please know that I miss you. This is a, I told the worship team earlier, this may be the strangest Easter I've ever had. Uh, but... Uh, all this is going to pass, and, uh, and we'll be together again soon. And uh, boy, what a great day that's going to be. I think there's going to be a lot of hugs and a lot of tears and a lot of, uh, a lot of joy when we all finally get together. But in the meantime, we like to uh, take some moments to uh, get us together, at least on the Internet. And uh, I'd like to show you uh, what our 
internet schedule is for this week. And I think we have a graphic that we could show you on the screen right now. And uh, obviously today we're live streaming our Easter service. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I will be, ha you know what, I don't have it in front of me. Can we put it on the screen? I'm going to butcher this up if I'm not careful. Uh, tomorrow, we are getting together, I believe, at, 10 at 1 o'clock. Sorry, 1 o'clock. Always bring your notes with you, young preachers. Uh, tomorrow, we'll get together at 1 o'clock for a little, uh, just a little online chat, no agenda, just kind of uh, sharing what God's doing and, uh, and maybe laughing a little bit and just getting together. Oh, thank you very much. Great. And on uh, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, we'll have our online Bible study. And we'll be conducting that here. So if you're watching me right now, you'll be able to be a part of the online Bible study. Friday at 10 o'clock, we're going to have our online prayer meeting. So we're going to seek God for about half an hour at 10 a.m. online. And then again next Sunday, Lord willing, we will be, thank you, sir, we will be live streaming our service again. So we're starting to get the hang of this. And uh, if the pastor would just remember his own notes, that would be even better. So uh, I can't thank the people enough that make these live streams possible. You, you, you all see what's going on on the platform, but we have a, a small crew that are doing the work of about 20 men, and uh, they are just fabulous. Everything from sound and switching the cameras and running the cameras, it's just the graphics, it's amazing. So I, I, th this, is, this whole thing is nothing that I can ever take credit for. Uh, God's people have just stepped up, and y'all have been wonderful. So everybody on the stage, everybody behind the camera, we love you. We appreciate you so much. And uh, you, are, <laughs> you are a blessing. All right. Uh, well, we're going to minister in song uh, for you. And uh, while we do that, we're going to give you a chance to, to give, if you would like to. Uh, on the screen, you'll see a, uh, a website. That's our church website, bcot.org slash give. And I cannot thank you enough for the faithfulness that the Bethel Church family has had in their giving. Um, I hear just terrible stories from other pastors. They're, they're worried sick about finances. And, and church, God is using you greatly as you're faithful with your giving. Thank you so much. You make me so proud. And uh, we will uh, give you a chance to give online. Some have already uh, dropped their offering off during the week. Uh, some have uh, mailed in their offerings. We're going to ask God to bless all of those uh, methods and uh, that God would bless the gift and the giver here today on this Easter Sunday. So why don't you join me in prayer and uh, the worship team is going to minister one more time. And then we're going to dig into the word, okay? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for your goodness. I pray, Lord, for the people who are listening who uh, are struggling today financially. Uh, maybe they were laid off. Uh, maybe uh, things have just taken a big hit uh, in their own personal finances. Whatever the case is, Jesus, would you supply for them and bless them in a big way? We ask you, Jesus, that you would bless this time of giving, that we as a church would be able to use it wisely and bless many, and Lord, that you would supply the needs of every giver. Well, thank you, Lord. We give you praise in your name. Amen. One who 
who wore our sin and shame, now robed in majesty, the radiance of perfect love, now shines for all to see. The fear that held us now gives way to Him who is our peace. His final breath upon the cross is now with is now alive in me your name jesus your name your name is victory all praise will rise to christ our king your name your name is victory all praise will rise to Christ our King By your Spirit I will rise From the ashes of defeat The resurrected King Is resurrecting me In your name I come alive To declare your victory The resurrected King Is resurrecting me Resurrecting me The tomb where soldiers watched in vain Was borrowed for three days His body there would not remain Our God has robbed our God has robbed the grave. Oh, victory! Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ. Our King, by your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King, proclaim this is present. By your Spirit I will rise. From the ashes of defeat, the resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me in your name i come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me the resurrecting king is res one more time the resurrected king is resurrecting me yes lord Resurrecting me, yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God.
Amen. Thank you, worship team, so much. We appreciate that. The resurrected king is resurrecting me. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Praise God. Well, uh, thank the Lord for what he's doing, and uh, we uh, want to go into the word now, and uh, uh, we're going to look at um, a special story on Easter again. Uh, the title of my message today is this, A Surprise Guest. A Surprise Guest. Let me get my notes since I did so well without notes last time. Uh, Luke chapter 24 is where I want us to direct our attention today. So why don't we go there, Luke chapter 24, and we're going to begin in verse 36, and we're going to go to verse 49. We're going to begin in verse 36 and go to verse 49. Now, here is the setting for our text today. Here's the setting for this passage today. Jesus has, uh, and if you hear voices, that's, uh, that's the Holy Spirit speaking right now. Actually, it's Ralph Clayco's voicemail. But anyway, uh, we, we are, uh, we're, we're going to look at, the setting here. Here's what's going on. The disciples have already heard that Jesus has risen from the dead. Uh, and they're all together in one place. They're all together in one room. And then Jesus appears. The risen Jesus. The one who was dead, but now he's very much alive. And I want to take a look at this passage of Scripture together and uh, show you what I believe God wants to do in each of our lives here today. So Luke chapter 24, beginning in verse 36. Why don't you follow along with me? Uh, verse 36 starts this way. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, Why are you so troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and he ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. And then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the, for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and I'm going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you again for your word. We, we celebrate the fact, Jesus, that you have risen from the dead. And now, Lord, I pray that you would speak to us and change us and challenge each and every one of us here today. And we'll thank you and we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, here we go. The, the disciples were kind of at a place where they were facing a lot of uncertainty. Uh, they had just found out that Jesus' body was no longer in the tomb. They had been told that. Some of them had seen it for themselves. They, they saw that Jesus' body was no longer there. And understand that they didn't get it yet. They didn't understand that Jesus was going to raise from the dead. They had no idea what was going on and what was going to be coming. And so what was interesting here is that the disciples, followers of Jesus Christ, found themselves at a time of a lot of uncertainty. Maybe a lot of fear. We have been living in some pretty fearful and uncertain times for the last month, haven't we? And this is what I believe God wants to do. 
This is what I believe Jesus' purpose is for all of us. I believe that the resurrected king wants to make an appearance in your life today. Now, not physically. We're not, we're not uh, asking Jesus. To, I mean, if he does, that'd be pretty awesome, and uh, let's hope we get that on Facebook Live. But uh, I, I'm really asking Jesus to, to show up in a spiritual way in our lives, in our emotions, in our situation, in our soul, in our, in our, in our everyday lives. I, I believe that we have some people uh, that are listening today that are facing some uncertainty, some confusion, and you need Jesus to show up, this resurrected king. And today, I would like to show you what the Lord's intention is is what he wants to do in every life that's hearing this message here today. What is his purpose? As Jesus showed up in that room with the disciples, he brought some stuff with him. I believe that Jesus has brought some stuff with him today that he wants to share in your life. And let me give you what those things are today. First of all, I believe that Jesus wants to restore peace. Number one, I believe that Jesus wants to restore your peace. So much fear out there right now. We have people that are, (laughs) I mean, if, if we cough from allergies, we don't know if we need to get tested or not now. I mean, this is how we're living. Uh, if somebody sneezes three aisles over from us at Walmart, we think that we're gonna we're gonna get it. And I'm not trying to minimize anybody's concerns. We're we're in uncharted waters here, correct? But here's one thing I know. Look at verse 36 again. The first thing he said to his disciples, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them. And said to them, look what he didn't say. He did not say, surprise! I mean, that was probably taken care of. Jesus didn't say, guess who? The the first thing that Jesus did was say, peace be with you. The first thing that Jesus brought to his disciples was peace. You see, these disciples had to be going through a lot here. The disciples had to be thinking, wow, what, what's, I mean, they killed Jesus, are we next? I mean, seriously, it, it was pretty public uh, who his disciples and his follower, followers were. So they got to be thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I'm the next one that's going to uh, get killed or, or, or even crucified. Maybe they're going to come after me. Maybe they're wondering about their future. It's like, wow, we... We left everything to follow this guy, and now he's gone. Uncertainty. Confusion. How about what in the world happened to Jesus' body? Last we knew, he was put into a brand new tomb that nobody had ever used, and and he was put in there, and, and this stone that weighed tons was rolled away by itself, apparently, and his body is gone. What is going on? Lots of confusion. Lots of uncertainty. Lots of questions. I don't doubt that those that are listening here today, you might have a lot of questions. What's going to happen with my future? I got laid off. Uh, What's going to happen financially? I'm going through a lot of things physically right now. I don't understand this. I did nothing wrong and I'm still going through all of this what is going on uncertainty fear confusion let me just say something real quick for every person hearing today Jesus never operates in confusion That's not the playing field by which Jesus ever operates. In fact, the Bible tells us that Jesus is not the author of confusion, but it's actually the enemy of our souls, the devil, that is the author of confusion. 
So if there's a lot of confusion going on in your life, please don't attribute that to Jesus. Nothing could be further from the truth. But I believe that in our time of uncertainty, the same thing that Jesus spoke to the disciples, he wants to speak into your life. Peace be to you. I want to give you my peace. Now, that doesn't mean all of our problems go away, but we could still have peace in the midst of the problems. <laughs> We've had quite a week here in Northeast Ohio. On Wednesday, no, I'm sorry, on Monday, on Monday, I was wearing a golf shirt and a pair of shorts watching my son beat me in a round of golf, handily, by the way, and we've kicked him out of the house. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, but he's got to learn somehow. Uh, so, so Monday, that, then Tuesday night, my phone starts like this shrill beeping sound. There's a tornado warning going on. Now, growing up in Illinois, tornadoes might be perceived differently than some other people. Tornadoes are kind of like a regular occasion where I grew up. So tornadoes are kind of an event more than something to take cover from. <laughs> and and so, so if it's 12 midnight, my wife is hunkered down uh, in the room, bedroom, with the two big dogs waiting for the word for me to get downstairs. What am I doing? I'm eating chips, and I'm watching the whole thing on TV, just fascinated with it. And I figure if my TV goes out, then it's time for us to take cover. It, it's funny. It's funny because in the midst of the store, I, I, I tend to be kind of chill when it comes to those things. I'm not making fun of my wife. She's probably the smarter one of the two of us. But uh, I, I just tend to be pretty relaxed when it comes to that kind of stuff. That's kind of what peace is. It doesn't necessarily take the storm away, but you could be calm in the midst of it. And your circumstances, <laughs> in fact, our circumstances changed here in Northeast Ohio because two days later, we had two inches of snow. Unbelievable. But the Lord has a way of in the midst of our crisis and in the midst of our difficulty, because he's risen from the dead, he could say, I've got you. I've got you. You're going through this pandemic. I've got you. You're going through this physical battle. I've got you. You're going through this crisis time. You're going through this financial burden. I've got you. One of my favorite verses, and I quote it a lot here at the church, is Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. That's the kind of peace that I believe the risen Savior offers to us. A peace that is not ignorant of the trial. It's not ignorant of the problem. It's just there in spite of the problem. So the first thing Jesus, the resurrected king, wants to do today, I believe, is restore peace. Number two, if we keep on reading, I believe that he wants to resolve some misconceptions about him. He wants to resolve some misconceptions about him. Well, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Uh, take a look at verse 37, and let's go down to verse 43. It says, they were startled. Now, Jesus has just appeared, okay? It says, peace be with you. Verse 37, they were startled and they were frightened, thinking they'd, they'd saw a ghost. And he said to them, why are you so troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see, a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe, 
uh, believe it because of joy and amazement. He asked them, do you have anything to eat? That's my life verse, by the way. Do you have anything to eat? Verse 42, and they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. See, here's the deal. Here's the deal. The disciples thought that Jesus was a ghost. Let me unpack that a little bit better, okay? They literally thought that Jesus was something that he wasn't. They had the wrong concept of who was standing before them. They had an idea of what he was, but they were totally wrong. It's times like these that we're living in that our concept of God can really get skewed if we're not careful. We can have a, uh, an idea of who Jesus is and what he is that's not accurate whatsoever. And a lot of times, those misconceptions of who Jesus is, they come at the darkest moments of our lives, in the midst of confusion. I have heard people who were followers of Jesus, but they went through this worst time in their lives, or they went through a dark time in their lives, and what came out of their mouths as far as what they thought about Jesus was anything but who he really is. Maybe I can give you a few examples. These are just a few, maybe three that I've heard before. First one, oh, God doesn't love me. Now we know that's a lie. And let me pause here by saying, you, the listener today, you have a choice every day of your life. You will either believe the devil's lies about God and you, or you will believe the truth of God's word about God and you. You will either believe the lies of the enemy, or you will believe the truth of Jesus. It's no wonder that Jesus said, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. In fact, Jesus even identified himself as the truth. So for those of us who might catch ourselves with this misconception that says, well, God doesn't love me, can I invite you to look at Romans chapter 5, verse 8? It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So friend, when you and I were at our worst, Jesus still loves us. Please do not think that your trouble and your crisis is any reflection on the amount of love that Jesus has for you. He loves you no matter what. Here's another misconception. Uh, God is out to get me. God is out to get me. I, I've heard Christians say this. Rarely have I heard a non-Christian say this. But I've heard people that have followed Jesus and they think, well, I, I must be Jesus' personal whipping boy or girl. And all of God's promises apply to everybody else, but not me. He's going to get me because I stole that cookie out of Grandma's jar 35 years ago. And Grandma, I apologize. Actually, no, I don't. It was wonderful. But listen, that's not the way God acts. Jesus isn't that way. Not at all. In fact, look at Jeremiah 29, verse 11. He's out to get you. No, he's not. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That hardly sounds like a God who's out to get you. Don't believe the lies. Believe the truth. Here's one more. God, God is detached from my life. In other words, God doesn't care. God is detached from my life. Uh, he, he really doesn't care about my everyday life. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 and 26 speak otherwise to that. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear, 
is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? God is very much attached to your life. God very much cares what, about what you're facing today. God cares about what concerns you. What are these? These are misconceptions of God that often pop up in our heads when we're going through difficult, trying times. I believe that Jesus wants to do this. He wants to give us a true view of who he really is. He, he's, he's not the traffic cop waiting to bust you for going 56 and a 55. He, he's, he's not that person to leap out and say, aha, got you. That, that's, that's not him. That's not him. He is a God who loves you, who cares for you, and don't ever let anybody, including the enemy, say otherwise to you. Number three, what else does Jesus, the resurrected king, want to do for you on this Easter Sunday? Number three, I believe he wants to, uh, to remind us of his word. I believe he wants to remind us of his word today. Now, this is interesting. The disciples say, it's a ghost. And Jesus says, I'm not a ghost. I'm Jesus. Look, got the nail prints. Here, give me some fish. And he eats it right in front of him. Ghosts don't eat fish. Ghosts don't have flesh and bone. And, 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 but then Jesus goes further. And he, and he starts in verse 44. He, says, he said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me. That's a key part right there. Everything must be fulfilled that's written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name of all nations happening, uh, beginning at Jerusalem. See, it's, it's one thing for me to try to clear up any misconceptions or confusion that you might have about God. But nothing, nothing will reinforce everything you need than knowing what God's word has to say. There are promises found in God's word that I think that we should cling to. Look, folks, we are living in weird times right now. They come off as very uncertain. They come off as very frightening. But here's some promises from God's word that I want you to hang on to. Maybe one of these could really touch your life today. How about Exodus chapter 14, verse 14? It says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Here's another promise. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29 says, he gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. If you're feeling weary or weak today, he wants to increase your strength. James chapter 4, verse 7 Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he is just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Philippians 4, 19, it's the last one. My God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. You see, we need to be reminded what the Bible has to say. Th there is no greater tool that you can rely on, not an emergency stash of food, and, and if you've got that, that's great, okay? <laughs> I hear Jim Baker selling a lot right now. Uh, a, 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 a storage shelter, a, a whatever, you know, water, 8,000 rolls of toilet paper, great. Glad you've got it. You'll have toilet paper until you're 105. But there's no greater tool in your arsenal, in all seriousness, than the Word of God. Nothing, no, nothing will sustain you 
more than knowing what God's word has to say. This is why it's important that we read it. This is why it's important that we memorize it. This is why it's important that we rely on it. This is why it's important that we hear it taught and preached in church because this is our go-to weapon and our go-to tool. Here's the last thing that I believe that Jesus, the risen Jesus, wants to accomplish today. I believe that lastly he wants to reveal his plan for you. For some of us, we just need to be reminded that he has a plan. Some of us, we might think, well, Jesus has lost control. He has not lost control, and he never will lose control. Look at verses 48 and 49, okay? So he's popped up. He's made this incredible surprise appearance to the disciples. He reminds them, hey, it's me. He reminds them what the word says clears up everything that he is, and then in verses 48 and 49, he says, you are my witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed from power from on high. Jesus is saying, guys, I've still got a plan, and you're in it. And I've got a plan for you. Now, we know that this was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came down and he, and he baptized them all in the Holy Spirit. And they began to share the word all over the world. But at that point, I can probably guarantee you that those disciples, when they sat in that room, they thought, yeah, Jesus has a plan. He died. Now his body's missing. Oh, he's up to something. I don't get that here. But then Jesus reminds them in the midst of all the crazy and all the chaos, I got a plan, and I've got a plan for you. Do you think Jesus was caught off guard when the coronavirus hit? No, no. Jesus is never surprised. He doesn't gasp. He doesn't get shocked. Jesus has it under control, and he's got a plan for you. And he's got a plan for every person Watching this today, he's got a plan, and you're in it, and he's in control. And please do not think that because things seem chaotic to you, that they're chaotic to Jesus. They're not. He has a plan. He has a purpose for you. I believe that Jesus is using this, this pandemic, literally to broadcast his message throughout the entire world. Small church pastors like me are all of a sudden becoming televangelists. I need a white suit, and I need a Canadian post office box. But we we are able to reach people now that we never, ever thought that we'd be able to reach, and we think that's fantastic. And, And I believe God's saying, that's right. The enemy wanted to destroy. I I'm doing my purpose, and I'm doing my will. That's how Jesus operates. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against it, and he'll even use, even in the midst of the chaos, and even in the midst of the crisis, and even in the midst of the confusion, he's got a plan. Friend, he's got a plan. Jesus is alive. And he wants to appear in a greater way in your life. And Ralph, could you help me out if you're available? This morning, on this Easter Sunday, if you're in need of peace, the resurrected king is here. Today, if you've got some views of Jesus that aren't really accurate, and, and you know, you, you've bought into the lies, the Lord's here to clear that up. He wants to show you all that he really is and more. Maybe you have forgotten to rely on what God's word has to say, and you've kind of gone by your feelings, and you've kind of gone by your emotions, and you've kind of started reacting to what's going on instead of standing on what God's word says the resurrected king is here to say just 
trust everything that I've written. And lastly today, maybe you think you're just existing. That somehow God's lost control. He hasn't. He's got a plan. He wants to reveal his purpose in you. He wants to remind you that he's got a plan. And today, on this Easter Sunday, I want you to be able to go from a live stream. I want you to go from a service. And I want you to be able to say, Lord, I trust you. I trust what your word says. You've risen from the dead. You, you can handle a virus. Lord, you've risen from the dead. You can handle what I'm facing. Lord, you, you, you've risen from the dead. All I can trust you. And I know that you've got a purpose. So I'm going to pray for you. And I'm going to ask our resurrected Savior to arrive in a bigger way in your life. I'm going to ask the resurrected King to give you that peace that you need, that assurance that he's in control. I want him to show you just who he is. And I want those verses that you've grown up hearing, some of us, I want them to ring true in your life like never before. Let's pray, Jesus. I'm asking you, risen King, great I am, Lord of all, I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, that you would bring peace to those that need it today, that you would give hope to those that need it today. God, may we not believe the lies, but Lord, may we stand on the truth. May your word come alive in us. And Jesus, may we know that you're in control and that you've got a plan. You've got us. Now we trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Rise, my soul, arise. God's in control. I'm not alone. Yes, rise into his light. His plans are good. I'm on his side. God of perfect peace, you are here with me on this ridge and sea. You're my joy, my hope. I will rest my soul in you. And sing, my soul now sing, for he is strong and I am weak. I'll sing with everything, my Savior's Wave after wave God of perfect peace You are here with me On this raging sea It's true And you won't let me go You're my joy and my hope I will rest my soul in you Yes, I will rest my soul in you and I will call upon your name you're above my circumstance all my life is in your hands and I will call upon your name you're above my circumstance All my life is in your hands Yes, I will call upon your name You're above my circumstance All my life is in your hands And I will call
call upon your name You're above my circumstance All my life is in your hands God of perfect peace You are here with me On this raging sea It's true You won't let me go You're my joy and my hope I will rest my soul in you. Yes, I will rest my soul.